This Week in IT, I cover all the details about Microsoft's new edition of on-premises Exchange Server, which is due to launch in 2025. Exchange Server will follow a similar path to on-premises SharePoint, and it will bring with it some new features. So stay tuned to find out all the details. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I discuss everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. This episode is sponsored by our friends at Semperis. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 68% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 5,850 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 6,000 this week. So if you'd like to help us achieve our goal, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Software companies have been moving to a subscription model now for many years. Companies like Microsoft, of course, and Adobe with things like the Creative Suite, which includes products like Photoshop and Microsoft with things like Office and Windows 365 and SharePoint Server. But at least in Microsoft's case, this has mainly been focused on cloud services, but they're slowly moving towards a position where many of the on-premises server products will now be subscription model only. At least in Microsoft's case, this has mainly been focused on cloud services, but that's slowly starting to change. Now, licensing is really complicated with Microsoft. If you've been involved in IT for any number of years, you'll probably be scratching your head quite often over how Microsoft deals with the licensing for its various products. It's always really complicated. But essentially, Microsoft is looking to move away from perpetual licensing for on-premises server products. Now, that really started in earnest, I think we can say, with SharePoint Server because Microsoft introduced what what it calls SharePoint Server Subscription Edition or the SE Edition in November 2021. Now, as far as I can understand, while this really essentially replaces SharePoint Server 2019, you can at least at the moment still buy perpetual licensing for SharePoint Server 2019 if you want, but going forwards, you basically need to have this subscription edition of SharePoint Server if you want to get the latest updates to that in terms of features. Now, Microsoft has been a bit slow to bring that model to other on-premises server solutions, but this week Microsoft announced that the next edition of Exchange Server will be called Exchange Server Subscription Edition, much like SharePoint, and that is going to launch in quarter three of 2025. But before I give you all the information about this new edition of Exchange Server, here's a quick message from the sponsor of today's video. Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in 9 out of 10 cyber attacks? Once cyber criminals control your Active Directory, it's game over. With access to AD, attackers can gain control of your entire network. And if AD goes down, business comes to a halt. And it's not just on-premises Active Directory that's under attack. Cyber criminals are targeting Azure Active Directory 2. Attackers can gain entry in the cloud and move to on-premises identity systems or vice versa. To keep threat actors out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, your ally in defending against adversaries trying to breach your hybrid Active Directory environment. Purple Knight is a free Active Directory security assessment tool built by some Paris identity experts. With Purple Knight, you can spot Active Directory vulnerabilities before attackers do. Purple Knight scans your hybrid environment for hundreds of indicators of exposure or compromise in both on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. Purple Knight gives you an overall security score and prioritized remediation guidance for fixing AD security vulnerabilities. So Exchange Server SE is going to follow the same licensing model as SharePoint Server SE. So you will be able to essentially use the new edition of Exchange 
if you either buy specific licenses for this new edition or you have software assurance with Microsoft. Now, many large organizations will, of course, have software assurance. So in fact, this new edition of Exchange Server going forwards isn't really going to affect those organizations very much. Now, again, just like SharePoint SC, Exchange SC is still going to use a server client licensing model where you have to buy a license for the server and then a client access license for every device that accesses the server. It will just now be on a subscription basis or under software assurance if that's what you have. Now, Microsoft is saying that you'll be able to download this new edition of Exchange Server from the Microsoft Admin center starting in early quarter three 2025. So the download section in the admin center essentially replaces the volume licensing download center where you'd usually have downloaded this kind of product in the past. And Microsoft is saying they're still going to provide a free hybrid server license and key for this new subscription edition of Exchange. Now, essentially, the new edition is going to be the same code as Exchange Server 2019 Cumulative Update 15. And that is going to be the last cumulative update for Exchange server 2019 but there are going to be a few minor changes to the subscription edition even though the code base is going to be largely similar just to account for the fact that it is well a different edition of course so the the license agreement will be slightly different how you input the license key that screen is going to change a little bit and the big difference here is that with both of these editions you're going to get support for windows server 2025 some other good news is that the new edition won't require any changes to the Active Directory schema, providing that you're upgrading from Exchange Server 2019. And the new edition will be serviced with two CUs on a, on a twice yearly cadence, just like Exchange is currently serviced. And Microsoft is already telling us what's likely to appear in the first cumulative update for Exchange Server subscription edition. So they're planning to add Kerberos for server-to-server -server communication. They're adding support for an admin API and deprecating the remote PowerShell service. Outlook Anywhere is being removed and also support for coexistence of earlier versions of Exchange. Now, at this point, we don't know what the pricing is going to be for subscription edition of Exchange. So we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. But whatever the situation, any server or account licenses that you've bought for Exchange Server 2019 won't be supported for Exchange a subscription edition. So now that we have SharePoint Server and Exchange on subscription models, what does this mean for the last major on-premises server product that isn't on that kind of program, Windows Server. Is that also going to move to a subscription uh, edition at some point? Well, I think it's very likely to happen at some point, but you can see that Microsoft is moving very slowly with this. It's taken them kind of what, almost three years to, well, it'll be four years by the time it's released, to move from the SharePoint sub edition to an exchange subscription edition. So I don't think that Microsoft is likely to move Windows Server to a subscription edition next year or quickly. They're doing this very slowly, slowly for whatever reason. And what about Windows on the desktop? Well, you can argue that we already have subscription edition for that kind of in Windows 365, but that's that of course isn't the, the physical version of Windows that you stored on an actual real device. And you know, I don't think that Microsoft is going to get rid of perpetual licensing for Windows Server on you know desktop devices or notebooks anytime soon. But I have a feeling that at some point they may offer the option of a subscription edition for that as well. But we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think about these changes to Exchange Server licensing and any of the new features coming up in the new edition of the product. I'd love to know what you think below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like because it helps us to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. 
Before I go, I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen that you might find interesting about new features coming to Dropbox for users of Microsoft 365. So do check that out. But that's it from me today. I'd like to thank again once more our sponsors on this video, Semperis, and I'll see you next time.